G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed part four of my tool and cutter grinder build, there's a link up there now, go watch that first, then come back and watch this one. Alrighty, so at the end of the last uh, episode, I promised to uh, tell you how I was going to get around that little issue with trying to mount the motor and where that shaft was and yada yada yada. So follow me over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm going to do to get around it. Over there. Alrighty, it was all a bit too bloody easy really. Move the shaft from down this end to this end of this, what will be this plate here. Then move this damn thing from there to there. Problem solved. Got this bit of uh, aluminium extrusion that I uh, found in the top of my toolbox. Didn't realise it was there. Good solid chunk. I'm going to uh, make a plate up to knock all this over. It will sit on there, bolt that to it so that I can make that make the motor adjustable. So it was that problem. Belt's perfect. This uh, sits in an okay position now. I might actually move it back just a little more yet uh, so that I can get down into there put the adjustment in it that I want to make be able to adjust, adjust this up and down because as as I pivot this thing across it moves this moves up and down so you need to be able to move this up and down to maintain your center line but anyway so um, today or well, this episode to make the casting for here I didn't cast this thing last week because I wasn't sure that you know I had enough depth to be able to do what I need to do here and I'm pretty sure I don't so I'm gonna have to cut this foam piece here off which was going to form part of the sprue and glue another piece in here so uh, well, that won't be too hard and then I'll cast this one up so I'll cast up this one and this one this week machine them all up there are lots of other little things to do lots and lots of little things that I keep putting off but that's what we're going to do this week until I run out of time so I'll get on with it alrighty after three storms in a row and having it rain nearly all day yesterday uh, I got those two bits made up and the sun's out this morning uh, well it's cloudy but the sun's on and off out so I've now got the furnace running at the back heating up and we'll see how we go pouring these two well absolutely nothing's going right here today but anyway so I poured the wheel guard first because I didn't quite have a full crucible this one's the uh, wheel guard and I think it should be okay yeah it's fine Although it looks like it leaked a bit too. This one was poured about an hour ago. Oh yeah. So, million dollar question. What is this like? This thing is 200 mil long. It goes all the way to the bottom of the bucket. There, just as I thought. A load of crap and I'm going to have to re-pour it. Alrighty, I'll wait for them to cool down and then uh, I'll remake, remake, the, uh, remake this one. It's fairly straightforward and uh, I might get into machining that one up later on. And I bet you've been asking yourself, what the hell is he doing there? Well, there was a lot of breakout like these lumps here. Right around this and I want to grip that bit to machine all of this part so rather than get it out of there put it on the rotary table and, and do it on there because I have to put the rotary table on the mill later so I can always clean this up finish that off later with a, an end mill I was hoping to put a six mil aluminium uh, end mill in this and square it up and do it with that but I just couldn't get this over far enough because of the uh, tail stock but and then I thought oh, break this out and give this a go so that's done the job it's uh, it's made it concentric enough to uh, to be able to grip it around here. Alrighty, so we'll get that out of there and grip it on that end and do something about machining up the rest of it. Well, I don't know what happened there. I thought I had this thing turned on and uh, recording, but obviously I didn't. But anyway, I've cleaned up the face, cleaned up the outside of this and this back part here. Now I've put the uh, compound on, start cutting this across here. I managed to get a new form made up for, uh, for that one that didn't work out this morning to cast tomorrow so it's out baking in the sun but there's a storm rolling in it there so I'd better get it inside soon before it uh, gets wet but anyway I'll get on with this Alrighty, I'm going to machine this bit off while you guys aren't looking because it's all taken a bit too long. 
Alrighty, so that's that. Um, I'm just about had enough for one day. I've got a big mess to clean up here, so uh, I think that'll do me for today. Tomorrow I'll uh, pop around and bore the inside out. Alrighty, so thankfully the sun was out this morning, so I got another crack at casting up that uh, mounting plate. And I tried something different, as you can see by this image, uh, to try and contain uh, the, the metal up top. Um, it's a problem because I don't have enough sand in that bucket, basically. I need to go and buy another bag and sit down and dry it completely and then sift it all out. So anyway, I, I went up to the hardware store and I grabbed uh, a PVC collar. Uh, to put around it and, uh, and then pack it full of sand and it seemed to be going pretty well then all of a sudden the can on the top started to float upwards and then I saw it kick sideways and so I, I give it a bit of a tap with the crucible and this is the result of it <laughs> probably if I'd have just left it alone and not give it a tap it wouldn't have got wouldn't have gone off kilter like that. But anyway, I'm going to concede to the casting gods and give up on trying to cast that. Alrighty, so I'm not going to video it. I'm just going to machine this little this, this bit out here because it'll be pretty boring. Then I'll move the camera around to the other end and machine the taper on the inside. Well, viewers, my apologies. I intended to uh, video the last few passes of the cut in here because I've spent probably an hour and a half boring all this out and machining that out of there. So I sort of wasn't going to try and video all of that. But I've had to abandon it and I've now got marks in here which you won't be able to see when the wheel's in there anyway. So, uh, but this thing has ended up really thin. Rings like a bell. Touch a tool on and it just squeals its head off. Anyway, so uh, it's lunchtime now. I'm going to get that out of there. Oh, I won't be able to finish it entirely until I uh, get it into the rotary table and finish milling the outside of this off and then mill this bit up and drill a hole through it and blah 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 Oh, before I do that, I've spent so long doing that I've had plenty of time to think and I've been thinking about this thing Alright, this is uh, this is the back end of it where the motor bolt's on I reckon I can, I can resurrect this back up to about here somewhere uh, and then there's just a short piece on the front for grinder mounts so I think I might just use this piece for that Alright, lunchtime, back later and uh, we might do something to this see how we go Alrighty, after cutting all those big chunks off that were around the centre here, I'm starting to think that I might actually be able to use it in the minute that I intended to use it. So I'm going to clean this up and we'll see how we go. Alrighty, that's as much as I want to take off that. These little shitty bits here, I'll just give them the same treatment as I gave the spindle housing. Just put them up before I paint it. Because they're all over on the back side when it's all assembled anyway where you can't see it. I'm going to clean this bit up and then uh, I won't show you all of the machining. I think you've seen enough of that. Alrighty, that's coming up better. The more I machine this, the more I think I'm going to get away with this. But this bit, this crappy bit here is uh, shitty foam from... Uh, but I'm just going to machine this back until I clean that edge up and I flip it over. I think I'm going to still end up with something about 15 millimeters thick in here for the spindle motor to bolt to. Well, I gotta say, this is this is working out much better than I would have hoped. I'm not gonna take that out there and show you because I want to do some more to it yet. It's getting late in the afternoon and I've had enough. Uh, starting to feel like beer o'clock. Tomorrow morning I'll put some smaller end mills in it and just square this corner up a little bit more. Uh, and maybe while it's still in there, get the two holes drilled and tapped in here. So I can mount the spindle up in here. I'll have to knock a bit off this corner too by the looks of it. Anyway, might even have to round this off a tad. But anyway, that is, like I said, coming up much better than I could have hoped, possibly hoped for. But that's it for today, so until tomorrow. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking, I've uh, come up into this corner with a smaller end mill. 
and I've rounded off the bottom of this to fit up into uh, that rounded corner. And yes, Rusty, I use the file. So now I'm going to drill two holes in here and tap them M8. Alrighty, perfect fit. So anyway, I'll get that back off there again and uh, finish machining up these two faces and that face and then I can do something about working out where the motor sits and drilling and tapping a couple of holes in here for the adjustment and where the hole in here has got to go. Well, i got to say, considering what this lump of stuff looked like when it came out of, out of the sand, to end up with only this little bit here and that little bit there to have to do anything with, I've got to say, that's a bloody win, that is. That's an absolute win. Alrighty, just give me a moment to uh, to bolt this motor on here. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do now is figure out A, where that's going to bolt and B, where this hole's got to go. And I think I can actually move it back a bit where it is, in fact I'm pretty sure I can well, I could lay my hands on my damn rule which I can't at the moment, I don't know where it is I need to have a bloody clean up, a massive one shit everywhere so I'd say I can move that back to 12, 12 and a half, 13 mil from where it is anyway, so we'll figure out where that hole goes so that'll be the next step, put that hole in here and then machine up uh, something that goes up into that hole which, and, and put a 20 mil hole up through this, a nice neat one but leave it blank at the top here so that uh, I can thread it in there to put my adjusting screw on it to adjust it up and down like that. So that's the next cab off the rank. Well, I've been at this three and a half hours this morning and it's nearly lunchtime, so I'm going to have a break. Alrighty, so cutting hole with the hole so it worked so well for me last time I did it, I'm going to do it again. Uh, I'm shooting for something around 30 mil. It really doesn't matter what size it is because I've got to machine something to fit in there anyway. So much quicker and easier than getting out the boring head, taking that out and putting it in, taking it out again. Just mind you, I mean, I put a couple other sizes through there first, and I just measured that. Uh, it's about 0.25 over 30 mil, but like I said, it doesn't matter because I've got a machine something to fit in there anyway. Okay, that's that. So next up, we'll uh, make the piece that goes in there. Alrighty, so I've faced off the two ends, so I'll turn it down to the size to fit into here, that side, and it's actually half a mil big, it's 30.5, this is 50 something, so I've got a bit to take off it. Alrighty, I'll get that out of there and turn around and do the other end. Not as deep as I'd like. I don't want to stick that 20 millimeter end mill up there because I, it cuts over so it's I get rid of that crap there, but it's on the bottom, you can't see it anyway, so. Alrighty, that only has to have one thing done to it now, but I'm gonna leave that until it's fitted up into the uh, into that plate. 
Alrighty, so that's that bit done. I think I'm going to have to take some off the top of this, maybe 10 or 15 millimetres because there's a 30 mil gap there. The difference in the height between there and there is about 35 mil, maybe even 40. So yeah, I think I might have to take 15, even 20 mil off the top of this one so this can come down. That shaft in there is not the shaft I'm going to use. This is it here. But as you can see, it's way too long and I've been using that shorter one just to, uh, to make life a bit simpler. Beautiful, good, good fit. All right, there. Yeah, so uh, what I've got to do is once I get this to the right length, is grind. I've decided I'll put a grinding wheel in the uh, in the mill and just grind a flat through this chrome and then mill a six millimeter slot in it. And I'm going to drill a drill and tap an eight millimeter hole in here and then machine the end of an eight mil grub screw down to a six mil nice fit into that groove. So I'll mill the groove first so that I can machine the grub screw to fit in the slot and that will stop the thing from pivoting this way and then on this side I'll put a, uh, a, a locking bolt just to lock it in place once it's set up so I'll have to unlock it so it can slide up and down then lock it back up afterwards well I've had enough for one day it's stinking hot and there's a beer with my name on it calling me see you tomorrow alrighty so I've spent a couple of hours this morning uh, modifying a couple of things worked out how long the shaft needed to be cut it off so now I'm going to use this uh, diamond grinding wheel that I used on the lathe a couple of times to try and bite through the chrome on here, mill six mil slot in it. Alrighty, that looks like it did the job quite nicely. It should be all the way through that chrome. Alrighty, that went a lot better than I thought it might. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this over and grind a flat on the other side for a clamping surface. But I won't make you watch that. Alrighty, so that came up really well actually, that thing. Um, something else I did after I cut it off was I bored the end out. And I chopped out a little piece of that Teflon sheet that I've got with a wad punch. And uh, just put a piece up in there so that uh, this, this bolt here is running on that Teflon, not steel and steel. And uh, where are we? It's in this one. I've machined up that uh, grub screw so that it's got a nice little pin on the end of it that fits in that slot. So, go down to that low. So if I rock this thing forward with only a little tiny end mill in it, um, it will uh, we'll be able to adjust the center height. And then when we screw it, we can screw it all the way back up to uh, get it back up to the right height for these bigger 20 mil end mills and things like that. Alrighty, so it's lunchtime and I'm gonna go have some lunch and uh, have a think about what the hell I'm gonna do after lunch. We have a winner. Alrighty, so uh, what I need to do to finish that now is uh, get, get it into the rotary table, finish the outside off, uh, drill and tap it and slit it, and that'll be done. I might just polish this up a bit before I take it out, but I won't make you watch that. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking, I drilled and tapped a few holes in there, put a few bolts in it, hold it all together, wired this motor up, hoping then, uh, to get it to run so we can just see how it goes. But. I was probably a bit hopeful that a 70 watt motor would drive this thing, and it won't. 
So I'm going to have to uh, go and find myself a new motor, and maybe a 350 or 500 watt motor to drive this. Uh, so that'll probably take a week or a week and a half to get one of them. But there's probably still one or two episodes left in this. There's still a lot of things to do, lots of little things. So uh, you know, I'll have to get in and do that. If you have enjoyed watching me make this, how about giving it a great big thumbs up and smashing that like button because you know it helps me out. Well, I reckon that's about all we got time for this week. So uh, come and join me next week for what I think is part six uh, of this tool and cutter grinder build. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.